Hey guys, so today what I want to talk about is mental pitching mindset, all right? And I'm going to go through a couple of different things and checkpoints along the way where it's kind of a jumping off point for us to have on the mound or when we're getting prepared to throw. So bullet point number one, hitting is really difficult. We know that, all right? Many of us are pitchers because we weren't good hitters. So we need to understand that mentality and have that mindset. So a couple of things that we can do to prepare for that, watching our own team's BP. We know that when our own BP pitcher, if they're really good at throwing consistent, straight fastballs for strikes, their job as a BP pitcher is to allow the hitter to put the ball in play and make them feel good to get ready so they can be prepared to hit. Well, watch the take the converse of that, and that is watching our opponents pregame batting practice. You can learn so much, but you can also understand how difficult it is because their BP pitcher is trying to do the same thing. That activity is extremely difficult, and how many outs that those hitters, your opposing hitters, or even the hitters on your own team when you watch BP, how many outs they do make over the course of that time. So thinking about that allows you to prepare a little bit differently because we understand hitting is really difficult. So having the mental note, a hitter is in the box. He's all by himself in that batter's box. He has no idea of what pitch is coming. You do. On the backside of that, as a pitcher, you have seven fielders that are behind you and you have one in front of you, right? Calling the game, that's your catcher. You too know what's coming, all right? The hitter, again, does not. You know the location of that pitch. The hitter does not. So you have all of the elements, the positive elements of surprise and the support that's behind you and your fielders so that when the ball does get put in play and it will get put in play and do not be afraid of contact, you have people behind you that have also been preparing so that when the ball is put in play, they can make that play. So again, thinking of taking the mindset from BP and how difficult hitting is when you tr when hitters are trying to hit, to turn around and to put that with the element of surprise where the hitter doesn't know what's coming. He has does he's all by himself. And now you have seven fielders behind you, one in front of you, and you understand that. So when you when you go into that, it makes you feel a little bit more at home on that mound and not so isolated because you have a support staff behind you. Bullet point number two, focus on the little things. Nothing is bigger. Throwing with a purpose, no matter what the situation is, is always going to allow you to have that physical prep to assist with the mental side of that execution. And we know that throwing with a purpose is paramount. Whenever we pick a baseball up and we go to throw, we want to make sure we have a purpose and a task that we're executing to try and get us better in that sense. Yeah, it sounds corny, but it's, it's, it's the purpose of why we are picking the ball up to throw. And that goes across the board. If We hope that our position players have the same mentality when they, when they go to throw. That's something that's small, but there's nothing bigger because baseball is a glorified game of throwing catch. And I, you've heard me say that before. Work to perfect your mechanics. Each part of your throwing motion has a job to do, and you need to make sure it's in sync with your body. And that goes with your strength side of things. So if you have a deficiency and you understand your strengths and your weaknesses, and you know maybe I have you know a weak scap or I have you know, I have a tendency to pull off my front side and you can use video to understand those things. So those are things where you can use your technology side of thing. Everyone has a cell phone where you can video yourself and now you can start to perfect the side of your mechanics, which is, which is, which is a great thing for us. And that's what we need to do. Okay. Each part has its own motion. And if you understand that if there's a problem on the backside, it might have started on the front side, an equal and opposite reaction, okay? Command versus control, and I think this is a big mindset game when we talk about our mental preparation for things, okay? Command, I'm going to throw and execute every pitch, all right? Command the zone is the explanation that we, the exclamation we always hear from the bench, right? Command the zone, do what you need to do out there, but stay in command, right? 
when things go wrong, which they ultimately will, you can const still remain in control of the game, okay? Control, definition, I can manage the game and control the tempo. I want to control, I want, I want the game to flow at my pace. Maybe I want to be a guy who goes fast and maybe I'm a guy who takes a little bit more time out there to collect myself. Either one works, but you just need to understand where that is for yourself. You dictate the course of the game. You are in control. Have that mental mindset that you remain in control. By being in control, you can manage the different scenarios that are going to take place. Okay. By being in control, I can manage, execute, and prepare for positive, negative, and neutral outcomes that are both in and out of my control. Sometimes things are going to happen that are out of your control, right? Shortstop's going to make an error. First baseman is going to boot a ball, right? The outfielder is not going to make the catch. He's going to overthrow the cutoff man. All those things are things that you don't have control over. So you can't worry about them. Yeah, and they may a positive, a positive reaction to something shortstop makes a diving play up the middle spins gets up throws the first he's got the guy maybe a play we wouldn't have always necessarily made something that we don't prepare for every day but being in that situation allowed the shortstop to have the outcome shortstop that same shortstop who just made that play kicks a routine ball okay you did not have control over that as the pitcher you made your pitch you got the guy to ground out to the shortstop unfortunately the shortstop didn't make that play a neutral outcome right neutral outcome is maybe only getting one out on a routine double play ball that's a neutral outcome we still got an out it didn't hurt us but it didn't help us okay in that spot and the same thing on the offensive side of things bases loaded nobody out your team fails to score it didn't hurt you it didn't help you but it didn't hurt you, right? The opposing pitcher made a bunch of extra pitches that maybe he didn't ha have to do. Your team got to see a little bit more. Um, we allowed that, maybe that takes a, away from that pitcher's ability on the opposition side to get deeper into the game. And now our offense can get into their bullpen earlier. So maybe it had a long-term effect, but in the short term, it was a neutral outcome. And some of those things are in and out of your control. And it just is the case, okay? Understand what hitters are trying to do. The tendencies, the pregame stats, the lineup, the scouting reports, and the previous outcomes. If you're a, if you have faced this team or this batter before, or you faced them in high school or in summer ball, those are all scenarios that you can learn from, and you have maybe have to dig deep into the mental side of that uh, to prepare before you get out there. So you can come up with a game plan uh, along with your pitching coach, your head coach, um, but also the catcher, so that you can prepare for that. Game situational awareness, the running game, holding runners, being prepared for all those things and understanding before it happens what you can do in that sense, okay? The ball, the base, the backup, when the ball ultimately is put in play, right? You throw the pitch, the ball's put in play. Am I going to a base in this certain scenario? Am I going to the backup if it's hit to the outfield? Which base am I backing up if there is an overthrow? All those things are premeditated. It's all plug and play at this point. If you're trying to react to it in the game by getting yourself involved, if you're gonna end up overthinking the situation. We've all been there and it's going to happen. But if you have prepared for this physically, the mental side of the thing, when you play this game in your head, you'll already have a game plan that's going to go, that's going to go ahead and we're going to plug and play on that. <clears throat> Special plays for bunt defenses, so understanding the first and third situations, pickoffs and pitch outs, uh, defensive signs and the cues that entail on those things. All those things are things that we will work on in practice. But when the situation arises, we expect you to understand that. But if you don't game plan in your head, like, hey, first and second, nine hitters off, third inning, like, hey, this may be a bunt situation. Now, if coach, the only situation that I can run in this is X, Y, and Z, okay? So you understand that. I don't need to worry about bunt defenses, you know, A, B, because they only affect with runners on first and second, or maybe it's first runner on first with nobody out, whatever that situation may be. You understand because there's a, already a situation that you've prepared for physically in that sense, okay? Understanding the signs, 
going out there ill prepared and not understanding the signs is only going to affect your mental side negatively. It's going to impact the ability to execute the pitch. It's going to ex ability to impact what your reaction is going to be when that certain uh, situation does arise. You are the ninth fielder on the field. You have a glove. You are an athlete. You're expected to make your play. Yeah, in the infield, there's a chance where most of the time we want the position players to call off the pitcher. But in this sense, you are out there. If the ball hits you, we want you to make the play. And we understand that you need to be prepared for when that ball is hit to me, what I actually do with it. Okay. We don't want to have a panic attack on a comeback or a routine comebacker to us um, in that sense. So those are all things that we want to make sure that we accomplish physically in practice so that when the situation does arrive, mentally we are prepared to handle them. Throwing versus pitching, the language and the vocabulary of that. Throwing, I think, is what we do on the side. Okay, that's your, I'm going to throw, I'm going to play catch, and the, some of the examples I'm going to use here are throwing a bullpen. Do you want to throw? Okay, those are things that we do offside right we're, we're on the side we're not on the mound we're to the side we're doing all those things in lieu of competition okay so understanding the vocabulary portion of that pitching i think is what we do in a game or when we are competing okay that's what you're doing pitching is the game it's how am i strategically going to execute my game plan to get the hitter out okay and what am I going to do when the situation occurs where there's a runner on base or there's multiple multiple runners on base or a negative outcome has has occurred where the, the outcome is less than desirable in that sense. Example, execute the pitch. We say execute the pitch, right? The pitch I used I used to get that hitter out. So just have that mentality where there's a difference between throwing and pitching. Pitching is the competitive game side of things. Challenges. You're not perfect. No one is. Get over it and you're going to need to move on. All right. Well, I think the minute you understand that, the quicker you understand that failure is a major part of this game, you'll move on. And as a hitter, hitting is even more of a game of failure, right? So as a hitter, a good college hitter may fail 70, 65% of the time, the best maybe 60% of the time are gonna fail, all right? That still leaves such a margin for us as pitchers on the defensive side to get that hitter out, okay? So understanding you're not perfect, no one is, a little, little tidbit, food for thought, there's only been 30 perfect games in Division One college baseball in the last 60 years. So that's at the highest level with a ton of talent out there. And the majority of those are seven inning games. OK, so not even the nine inning games, adding those extra six outs. That's a whole different ball game. And think about that at the major league level and think about how many games you, you probably witnessed as perfect games or no hitters in, in high school or in Little League along the way. There's not many. OK, so you're not perfect. Get over it. OK, there will be base runners. We know it. There's going to be base runners. There's going to be guys on base. There's going to be traffic out there, and we need to control it. There's that word again, control. Manage it. Make the hitters earn it, and limit your contributions to it, okay? Limiting those contributions, for example, walks. Do not create an offense for the opposition by walking and hitting batters. Now, we're going to walk, guys. It's going to happen, right? Umpire is going to make a bad call. Even if you are a guy who commands the zone, and controls it extremely well, stuff's gonna happen. And we'll get to that in a little bit down the line here, but don't, don't contribute to a team's offense by walking and hitting guys. They're gonna hit, but if you don't put guys on base on your accord, you'll be okay. The hits are gonna happen. Now, if you, you hit guys and you walk guys and you put people on base in front of the guys that are gonna get their hits, because we know those hits are gonna happen. Those are predetermined outcomes right? No one's perfect. We just talked about it. You're going to limit the damage that's actually going to happen, and you're going to be able to maintain control and manage that long term over the course of the game, okay? You will make a great pitch, and it is going to get hit. You're going to make a great pitch, You're going to, and the shortstop's going to boot the ball. It's going to get hit over the center fielder's head. It's just going to happen, okay? Understand that. Move on from it. OK, the opposite is also going to 
be true. You're going to make an awful pitch, and a hitter is going to miss it and pop it up. Why? Because hitting is hard. Errors happen, okay? It's going to happen. The shortstop's going to boot the ball. The center fielder is going to kick it. It's going to happen. Free bases are going to occur because of physical errors, not mental, not mental errors. Mental errors are things that we can prepare for, okay? But physical errors are going to happen. The field is going to lend itself to bad hops, right? The ball's going to hit the bag and go up into the air at third base. It's going to happen. Errors are going to happen. Pick up your teammates and yourself. It will be rewarding. It's going to be a rewarding experience when, you know, if your shortstop boots the ball and that guy gets the second base and now that's the tying run and you go and strike out the side after that and make your pitches and do what you need to do, that's going to be a heck of a rewarding experience for yourself and your teammates, and they're going to rally around you for that. That reward, that journey, that challenge is going to be extremely difficult to overcome, but when you do, it's going to be a rewarding experience for you. I can tell you that. I've been there myself. Do not dwell on the negative physical outcomes. They will always be there. Like we just said, errors are going to happen, but don't dwell on those negative physical outcomes. Same thing for you. You're going to miss your spot. That pitch is going to get hit. It's going to be done. Damage will be done. It's okay. Deep breath, turn the page. As simple as that could be, but you have to believe it and you have to make it part. Bad calls are going to happen. We self-included as a manager, a player, and a coach. I understand that also. It's tough to get going. But once you can overcome it or let the other people who are not in the game, like your coach, your manager, worry about that, let me worry about that. You take care of, of throwing your game, staying in control, pitching your game, okay? <clears throat> You're going to get squeezed. The umpire is going to make a call. And your ability to overcome that is going to be crucial. Now, one time in history has an umpire changed a strike call to a ball or a ball to a strike, okay? You are not going to be the first. So it sounds corny. It sounds cliche, but it is true. It's not going to happen. Move on, okay? Move on from it, okay? You're not perfect. Get over it. Control the things that you can control, and you will be rewarded for that, okay? Controlling the things that you can control is your preparation, while we're sitting home right now because of COVID and we don't have a season, spending more time negatively dwelling on that is only digging you, yourself and your teammates deeper and deeper and deeper into a mental hole that when you do come back, it's going to be harder to climb out of, okay? You can't control it. I said before, it's not your fault that, you know, our season and COVID couldn't coexist in, our, in where we are situated in the country. CUNY and COVID couldn't exist, coexist. It is what it is. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. But you do have that responsibility to make sure you're being a, a solid student athlete in the classroom and you're being a good teammate, okay? And you're, you're holding up your end of the bargain on what your responsibilities lie and being accountable for that at all times. And that's super important, okay? That goes to control the things that you can control. You can control working on the mental side of things. You can control playing the games in your head. You can control going out and in your backyard or throwing into a net or a fence or a wall or hitting into things. You can do all those. Those are things that you can control, okay? How to overcome the challenges, all right? Your preparation, both mentally and physically, will help you, un how, help you ha un make you understand what is to be expected from the flow of the game. When and not if, negative things occur and they will occur okay limit your surprises if you can understand all the outcomes that can occur when they when they do occur you can manage your emotional reactions to those situations okay example of a surprise the last guy on the team the one you would least expect who has five at bats all season you're in a 14 inning game it's a marathon this guy gets up and hits a walk off home run that's a surprise it's a positive outcome for you on, on the on on your if it happens on your team it's a negative outcome for you if you're on the others if you're on the opposition okay but let's leave it as a positive right there that's a surprise okay an unlikely scenario would be slick fielding shortstop just boots a ball that leads to a run and causes you to lose a game that guy's been there for you all year his fielding percentage is through the roof 
the law of averages say that this, this guy is going to make this routine play. But maybe in this moment, the mental pressure or the pressure itself got to him. And unfortunately, or maybe the ball took a hop, something that was out of his control and it's out of your control. You made the pitch. It wasn't executed uh, on the defensive side of it. And it cost it had a negative outcome for you, a less than desirable outcome. All right. So if you can understand that, if you can run through those scenarios, you're going to limit your gut reaction to the surprise that's out there. And you're going to be able to handle the situations that are going to occur because of the actual and, and natural flow of the game, okay? <clears throat> all these things, surprises and unlikely scenarios are all gonna happen. They can and they will happen. Sometimes they'll happen together. Sometimes one will cause a chain reaction. There'll be a domino effect, but whatever it may be, they, I, can, I can promise you that they will occur. And the moment you understand that, the better off you're gonna be, okay? Understanding challenge versus threat mentality. And I think this is something that I've come to understand too by pitching and being in games and having an understanding, even in, on the managing, managerial side of it, when we're in games at the college level and how we can manage that. So a challenge, I think, is something that I'm prepared to do. I need to execute to achieve the desirable outcome that I want, okay? Um, on the mound, sticking with the pitching theme on the mental side of it, it's a three-two count. I got four-run lead. I'm in the bottom of the ninth with two outs, and the four hitters up. Okay, we know the four hitter. Maybe he's got power. We went through our pregame checklist. You know, this is a guy that could hurt us. He could hit the ball out of the park. He's got a couple of bombs on the year. He's had good at bats all year, uh, all game. He, we, but we've kept them in check. We've made, we've executed our pitch just to this point. This time, it's a three-two count. I got four-run lead. There's two outs. If this guy hits a, a homer off me. It doesn't hurt me, and it's not going to limit my chances of winning this game, okay? I'm challenging this guy, right? I'm going to go after him, okay? That's the challenge in that spot. And you've heard that, that language your whole life as a baseball player. Challenge him, okay? Don't give him a free pass. Again, limit your free passes in that spot. Limit your, your, your contributions to the opposing team's offense, okay? That guy hits a home run there. It's probably a subdued celebration, he beat you, so what? And now if you beat that guy on your best pitch in that spot, here it is, hit it, I'm challenging, okay? The mental thought process here, here, here it is, this is my best pitch. He can't hurt me, it's coming from a position of strength, I'm in control, the pressure's on him, I got the lead, and I got seven guys behind me and one in front of me, okay? Those are all statements. Think about the things you're saying in that spot. Those are all statements. Those are the things that are coming from the dugout. Those are the things that are probably flashing through your mind as you take a step off there to get the ball back from the catcher, which now leads you to that 3-2 count. Those are all positions of strength. Those are all statements that are made, okay? The threat, okay? Now this is the opposite side of it, the threat. A threat, I equate to something I'm not prepared to do. I'm reacting to the scenario emotionally in a fight or flight mentality, okay? And here's the situation I'm going to give here. Bases are loaded. There's no one out. It's the first inning. I just, I'm the pitcher. I just hit a batter. I walked the batter, and an error was just made behind me. The bases are juiced, and now the middle of the order is coming up. My, my mental position in this spot, maybe my coach is coming out to make a, a visit. Maybe my shortstop is coming in to talk to me, or my catcher's calling time taking a visit as well he's coming out to talk to me because my coaching staff doesn't want to waste the visit because it's in the first inning all these things are going through my head right my mental position is not good at this point okay what else can happen how am I getting out of this what can I throw to get a strike out here okay all of these things are going through my head and think about that those are not positions of strength those are questions I'm asking myself questions I'm questioning myself because of all the things that are happening, because I was not prepared to handle the predetermined outcomes, whether they're positive, negative, or out of my control. And in this scenario, I contributed with the walk and the hit batter, and then my, my shortstop contributed with the error. So here's an example of, of myself contributing to the chaos and also having someone else that I don't, he, I don't have control of what my shortstop does there. I may have made a great pitch. And now he kicked that ball and I'm in a negative spot. But again, I'm asking myself in the threat scenario questions versus the challenge scenario where I'm making statements to myself. I'm trying to execute the challenge at hand. Okay. Preparing for the challenges. 
of the game are going to limit the threatening mindset. Okay. If you number the challenges when they actually, when the, when those, when those less than desirable situations do occur, you can relate by saying, Hey, this is challenge number one of my day. I'm getting it right. Sometimes you hear your guys say, Hey, round one, when you came back in round two, it's almost like a boxing match, having that mentality where I'm going to get punched. Okay. Right. What's the Mike Tyson line? Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the punch in the face. Well, I know I'm going to put base runners on. I know base runners are going to hit their way on. I understand those things. Those are all going to be challenges at a certain point in the game that I'm going to need to be able to control so that I can stay in command of the game that happens. OK, so again, I can't stress it enough. Preparing for the challenges are going to limit that threatening mindset. OK, and when those less than desirable situations come, you'll be able to be prepared by saying, hey, this is my challenge. I'm going to get I'm going to get it right here. OK, I'm going to pick my teammate up. I'm going to execute this task at hand. So remembering the ultimate goal, throw this pitch with a purpose and conviction. Right. Everything I do has a purpose from the beginning of my season to my offense, my, my, my off season, all those things, everything I've done to this point has prepared me for this point, both mentally and physically, okay? And a lot of times we spend a lot of time speaking about the physical side, how to technically do stuff, right? This is where this comes into play, that mind remaining in the moment. This pitch, having the this pitch mentality, living in that moment where, Every time I take a step off the mat, every time I throw a pitch, a new game begins. A new pit, a, every time that happens, a new situation is arrived. Everything is constantly changing in baseball. And you need to have a different mindset for when the, the, the one two pitch that you're going to throw is going to have a different mindset than the two two pitch you're going to throw, right? We know that the one one pitch is, 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 is going to swing the count probably 300 to the hitter or 100 to you, right? So if I execute the 1-1 one, one pitch and I get to my count to 1-2, maybe that batting average is gonna drop into the 120s. If now I don't execute the 1-1 one, one pitch, the hitter wins that part of the count. Now I go to 2-1, maybe the batting average against in that count is gonna be closer to 400 maybe in that spot, all right? So ex executing that 1-1 one, one pitch, but living in that moment where now the two one pitch and how the how I'm going to approach that pitch is going to be different than the one two or the one one. But living in this pitch, remaining present, and every time it changes and living in that pitch my mentality, in that mindset. Eliminating distractions, both internal and external, okay, where I'm not worried about what's going on in the dugout. I'm not worried about the umpire strike zone. I'm throwing my game. I'm pitching to where I need to be in the zone, and that's that's where I'm going. I'm in control here. I'm commanding what's going on. I'm eliminating those distractions. I don't care the chirping that's coming out of the visitor's dugout. I know that that guy's on first and he's dancing. Well, guess what? There's a guy on second, so the guy on first can't dance, can't go anywhere, okay? Um, eliminate those distractions, right? I'm not worried if something happened at home or on the way to the game or a spat with a teammate or a spat with a coach or something like where there's a disagreement. Let's put it past us where between the white lines, all that goes away, okay? We're living in the this pitch mentality in the moment. Breathe, focus on your breathing. It's gonna stop the spinning for you. Allow yourself to refocus, all right? When you when you think about it, when you gotta take a deep breath, what happens? Everything's going, right? Every Everything's up. That threat mentality, that threat mindset is taking over. And then we're engaged in that fight or flight mentality. Adrenaline's going, the moment's getting to us. We need to take a step back. Breathe a little bit and allow us to refocus. Take a second, calm down, get it all together, right? Most of the time when a, when a mound visit's being taken, it's to give a pitcher a chance, to give the guy some time we hear, right? Um, that's your chance to refocus yourself, where take a step back, walk to the back of the mound, take a deep breath, clear your head, and then get ready to go again. Okay. Repeat and execute the pitch at hand before you make the net, before you make the pitch. Run it through your head already. Get it through it. We, how many times in a bullpen have you executed that breaking ball uh, in the dirt to get a strikeout on a one-two count where there's no, no, no batter in the box? 
But that's the location. That's the execution of that pitch at that spot. You've done it before. It's just the only difference is you're in the game. So don't, don't let the moment get you. You've prepared for that physically. So the mental side of it should just take over. You, you're going to plug and play in that sense. But have an understanding of what you're trying to do. So that's that's a little bit of our part one here of, of the mental mindset of pitching and how we're going to start approaching this as we get closer to the fall. Um, so take a look at it. If you have questions, you know, you can reach 